Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Master Paul. Very grateful to be connected with you after a very busy weekend. It is Monday, September 19. And for those that are just tuning in, the subject today, I'm sure, can align with just about everybody. It is how to harmonize with your existing life, regardless of its conditions, and at the same time create a better one. So if this sounds interesting to you, sounds like it would be of value, I encourage you to stick around. I encourage you to take advantage of the wisdom, the guidance, the blessings, and the insights that will be shared with you today. If you cannot, because this will be a full hour as I do every Monday through Thursday, then please consider subscribing and liking me on Facebook and you'll be notified of uh, when I go live and also you'll be able to come back to my Facebook page and watch this recording. <clears throat> so this weekend was very active uh, here at the Master Shah's Tao Healing Center in Honolulu. We had a visiting teacher, Master Huiling, which I did a live stream on Wednesday. And unfortunately, she was not able to join me live, but I hope that some of you were able to make that event. It was extremely powerful. A lot of heart opening uh, occurred during this very special weekend. And in essence, we are preparing for an upcoming event with uh, my spiritual teacher, my spiritual father, Master Shah. Dr. Master Shah, for those that do not know who he is, is a world-renowned uh, healer. He's a servant to humanity, and he has written over 20 books, uh, 11 of which are New York Times bestsellers. Uh, not an easy accomplishment. The reason it's hit so many New York Times bestsellers is because the wisdom that he brings touches everybody's soul. And so I share that same wisdom. I take no credit for the wisdom. Uh, heaven has <coughs> blessed me to be very skilled in uh, this knowledge, which is why they have the name Master in front of the name. But regardless, I will apply that wisdom today in this subject of how to harmonize your life. There are so many ways in which life can get out of harmony. It can move away from harmony in um, health issues. It can move away from harmony with our family members. We can be on our spiritual journey and they can resist uh, our growth. <clears throat> it can become out of harmony uh, from simple physical things, a lack of um, you know, sexual gratification. It can get out of harmony from uh, focus in the wrong areas, focusing on not enough money. Life can get out of harmony uh, at work by a coworker who is unpleasant. So there's many areas in life where we can have a lack of harmony and that inhibits us from creating the future that we want. And so today I will be focusing on that. I thank all of you for joining. I thank you for hitting the share button and letting other people know about this. would love to have a lot more souls watching live today. And so while we are waiting for them, I will acknowledge who has shown up so far today. So welcome to Alicia. Aloha Susan Birchmore. Aloha and welcome Kathy Arnold. Welcome Nicole. Aloha Tracy and welcome also Teresa Darling. Aloha Jessica. Welcome to Sharon Dodd. Aloha Lisa Prado and Shelley. <coughs> welcome Deborah Miller. Welcome Leandra. Welcome Nelson. Aloha M.A. Drade. And welcome Kristen Strachan and Kristen Rojas. Aloha Reina. Welcome to Angie Taylor. Aloha and welcome to um, Anthea and uh, Kate Nicole. Welcome also to Candy Cornet and Kim Morrison. Aloha and welcome. Welcome Diane Powers and Aloha Norman. Welcome also to CJ and welcome Ilona. Aloha to uh, Allison Turner. I think I've connected, I said hello before, but I could be wrong. Welcome CJ. And uh, welcome also to Linda Jansen, Julia Lawrence. If I missed you, please forgive me. Uh, as my teacher would say, if I don't say your name, even bigger blessings. Do you know why that is? Because 
uh, it depends on how you respond actually you know uh, I've, I've learned this lesson the hard way sometimes uh, my teacher will be mentioning other people's names and and I know that my name should be in there because I was one of those that served and sometimes he doesn't do it why the, the teacher is always testing right the reason why is he, the teacher can tell is your ego involved are you going hey you didn't mention me many times I catch myself going oh dang I failed again my ego wants to be recognized always opportunity to learn right so uh, if I don't mention your name and you don't take it personally you don't take it from an ego perspective then uh, you get virtue it's it's a little heavenly secret it's a showing where you don't have to be acknowledged welcome also to Jamie McDonald welcome Becky Lafar and welcome to um, everyone else so today's teaching is uh, well we're not going to go into today's teaching yet we're going to connect so let us place our hands in soul light soul service hand position uh, much like a prayer position we drop the left hand in the front of the heart center and the right hand remains gently pointed towards heaven we're going to connect and invite in all the beings of light and we will ask them to assist us with this wisdom today so as comfortable please join with me for those that are new um, we will chant a mantra it is a healing mantra and you are welcome to make a request to heaven for a blessing so all layers of the divine the Tao the source all of our spiritual mothers and fathers all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas beloved Jesus beloved Mother Mary beloved Kuan Yin beloved Namo Amitofu we love you all honor you deeply respect you we ask most humbly most sincerely that you please join us today Please bless each and every one of us as appropriate. Come to sit in our heart centers. Bless us to more fully develop and open our heart centers. Please bless us to receive the wisdom that will be offered today with the highest value. Please bless us to release blockages, mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs that inhibit us from moving forward on our spiritual journey, that inhibit us from enjoying life the way it presents itself to us and creating a better life. We're very grateful for this opportunity to receive your wisdom, guidance, and blessings. Dear the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace, and Harmony, transmitted to all souls in all universes, I love you, we honor you, deeply appreciate and respect you. We ask you most humbly, most sincerely, to please be present. We ask that you please turn on and as we chant love, peace, and harmony to serve unconditionally all souls, that we invite all souls in all universes to chant with us at this time. So again, for those that are new, just joining for the first time, this is a mantra. It is, a, uh, it is actually in 43 languages worldwide and is chanted in six continents for the purpose of bringing love peace and harmony to humanity it is also quite a healing mantra so you may make a request uh, to heaven and I will uh, chant to gather all these souls and to gather our hearts and souls together as one let us continue Lula Lula Li Lula Lula La Li Lula Lula Li Lula Lula Li Lula Lula Li Lula Woi Woshin Narling Woi Tran Ran Lay Wong her musher shang shang ai ping on the se shang ai ping on the se I love my heart and soul I love all humanity join hearts and souls together love peace and harmony <coughs> love peace and harmony one more round lula lula li lula lula la li 
lalu lali lula lula hali lula lula hali lula wo ai wo xin har ling wo ai chuan ran lei wang li rong har mu shi sheng xiang ai ping on de xie xiang ai ping on de xie i love my heart and so i love all humanity join hearts and souls together love peace and harmony love peace and harmony ha 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 thank you thank you thank you <coughs> okay so thank you for joining and thank you for uh chanting with me if you know the song if not i hope you enjoyed it a uh, welcome shelly sharon dodd welcome missy dodd welcome jennifer maria welcome also to johnny and thuiba welcome hazel aloha christopher ronan aloha sherry Aloha and welcome Manjula, welcome Nebedita and Aloha Belinda, welcome also to um, Allison, I think I mentioned you already, but uh, if not, welcome. Uh, please forgive me again if I haven't mentioned your name. So today should be a pretty popular subject. When I do these subjects, they are always uh, the subject matter and often the wisdom is uh, flowed and what does that mean that means <clears throat> it's part from my mind and it's uh, part spiritual it's just simply guidance um, now as a master teacher as someone who is trained in this modality of this understanding f my whole life but specifically the last 10 years um, i rarely speak about things that i don't already have experience in and so i will pepper this with experience as i go through this I will offer um, not only the guidance and the insights, but practical techniques that you can actually apply every day to assist yourself. So that when you catch yourself um, not creating the future that you would like, when you catch yourself not addressing your current life in a harmonizing way, then you will have the skill set to, um, to deal with it. Okay? So that's what you're going to expect today. Uh, through this live stream <clears throat> so I have to give a little bit of a background um, is what I'm hearing anyway so I'm going to share a little background so everybody who's watching today has varying levels of of awakening and that awakening means that you're not fooled by the by all the different things in life that are taking your attention away from your soul and your spiritual journey you are making concerted efforts to educate yourself to shift uh, whatever blockages you have in your life so that you can be happier and healthier so that you can align to your to your creator uh, easier better faster so that means you're on the awakening path whereas the uh, probably 90 or more percent of, of humanities is very much in the sheeple stages where they're just sheep following the the leaders of the the world uh, and they are not necessarily awake so the wisdom I share today will really only be understood by those that are on the awakening path having been on the awakening path since the literally the age of 18 I literally moved into a, a home where the lady at the home had some very esoteric books and then all of a sudden memory started flooding back and wisdom started flooding back and I was instantly thrown onto the spiritual path having been on this path for over 30 years not over 40 years <laughs> for over 30 years um, there are many things that we need to understand the first is that no matter what I say today no matter how right it may be 
or how wrong it may be to you because each each person will receive it differently um, that's okay one of the highest ways to move forward in your consciousness is to never judge the information you hear but also to um, to allow the recognition that the value that it may serve may serve you at a different time it might serve you now but if you go into a judgment that's the first blockage on your spiritual journey because judging and criticalness uh, inhibits us from moving forward on this full journey so no matter if it's me or or another spiritual guru or somebody on the street that is you know literally just not all there um, instead of being in a judgmental place be in a place of honoring and respect of that human no matter where they're at this is a exceptional way to bring yourself to life because what it does is it allows you to turn off a part of you that is ego oriented you cannot move into creating the life you want if you're in a place of i already know if you're in a place of i already know i am right they are wrong uh, I'll decide if this is important to me no matter who it is you're listening to um, I'll be the the judge if this is right or wrong whatever that that's all ego based stuff and it is one of the main contributors to the inability of us to move forward in our spiritual journey the the, the master the, the the monk that is truly moves forward the yogi the guru the spiritual aspirant that really moves forward on their path is the one that avoids judgment and criticism of everybody that crosses their path of all the information that crosses their path of all of the co-workers that you don't like that cross your path of the parents and the peers and everybody else that drives you a little crazy those souls are our greatest teachers that's not new information you've heard that line many times before the reason they are our greatest teachers is because each and every time we have a uh, uh, you know we want to defend ourselves or we want to put up a roadblock on on a mental emotional level each and every time we throw up one of those we uh, block ourselves from moving forward we move ourselves out of harmony and into a place of disharmony because it's all associated with ego and ego response where does ego and ego response originate from it originates from you, the entirety of your upbringing your karma and your self-worth values I'll repeat that your ego originates and ego is not as a very big word okay it doesn't mean you're an egotistic person it represents a culmination of your personality in this life and it is a culmination of all that you have been taught uh, your karmic conditions entering into this life and the personality you formed in terms of your self-worth and self value okay and so in order to be the person that stays in a harmonious place deals with life as it comes to you with harmony and create a future life that is of value to you the key is to see your personality yourself your entire ego presentation as exactly that you literally have to step up above it and look at it you have to see how you respond to certain people but you don't respond that way to other people how you're defensive to certain people and loving to other people how you have this face for this person and a completely different face for these people this is all part of our persona this is all part of what creates this harmony in our life in order to maintain harmony in our life we must 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 step up and out of our personality and start um, looking at every communication every experience that comes to us that comes at us with a different set of eyes and a different set of ears okay what do I mean you go through the day you wake up you're brushing your teeth you're getting your things ready the phone rings and it's a crisis or the kid comes in the room and it's a crisis or something triggers you out of a routine and all of a sudden it's a crisis that happens for each and every one of us at least once a day where something knocks us out of a pattern that we are accustomed to 
Why do we like the patterns? Because they're controllable. When we can control things, things are smooth, right? Uh, we can maintain that happiness quota, okay? But when anything comes at us out of the blue, it knocks against the areas in our life that we need to fix. For me, one of my big attachments is time, wanting to get things done efficiently. So if I have an agenda in my mind that it needs to be done by here and it doesn't happen by that time, then I butt up against my ego, my mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs, my attachments, okay? So I can either be irritated about it, which knocks me out of harmony, or I can see it as the person observing it and going, aha, I caught myself. Okay, I have to address this, right? So the, one of my earlier teachers referred to it as the dweller on the threshold. Okay, this was in the, the theosophical teachings going back 20 or so years. But the wisdom applies all the way through all the teachings, whether you're talking to an, a guru in India sitting on a lotus flower or, 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 or you're reading a book from the Dalai Lama. The wisdom is the same. We must um, look at our personality uh, mental responses, our personality verbal responses, and our physical actions before we take them, okay? Because once we're in a place of disharmony, we can, of course, reverse it, but the ideal is to deal with it in advance. So in order to get to that place of dealing with it in advance, you have to be conscious. And that's not always easy. We have spent 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, depending on your age, being very, very good at being unconscious. What does that mean, being unconscious? That means operating out of default. That means operating out of a of automatic response, operating out of a of a defensive posture, operating out of a, of a um, protectionistic mechanism. It means operating out of a um, something that was learned. So now we go back to, I see, I see your comment, Alice, and that's good. It's important to recognize where are your, where are your, uh, where are those mindsets, attitudes, beliefs, where are you, mm, that's, that's aspects of your ego. So now we go back to the beginning because in order to move to the point of being the dweller on the threshold, you actually need a practical path to get there. You need to be able to see how it originated so that you can unwind it, so that you can actually step above it and see it as much as possible. Cut yourself off before you think negative about that person or go down that uh, road that is not serving you to maintain harmony. So the three things that contribute to our um, inability to remain in harmony and create a better future are our uh, upbringing, which is what? What our parents taught us, what our brothers and sisters taught us, what the religious organizations taught us, what our teachers in school taught us, what the peers in the school systems taught us, uh, what the neighbors and all those that we paid attention to, what we observed on television, okay? Uh, television is a big peer. Television is a big teacher. Not certainly by far the best teacher, probably one of the worst teachers. But nevertheless, it is our teacher, one of them. And so all of these formed personality. Um, our karma was a massive contributor to our personality. What does that mean? That means our soul has lived many, many lifetimes. Our soul has gathered all kinds of positive virtue, all kinds of unpleasant services. And those positive virtues give us our good attributes. Those unpleasant services they filter into our personality life in the form of negative mindsets, negative attachments, negative beliefs, the formations of our egos, the formations of our um, selfishness, the formations of even our pain body, our emotional sufferings, you know, our, our depressions, our, 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 our griefs, or our, our, our stuck areas. These are all karmic in relationship. And, you know, they tend to start filtering in they, they filter in at the beginning before we're ever born because they create the conditions of where we're born, who, who enters our life when we're born, who our mother and father, all, all that stuff is related to our karmic conditions. So all that is predisposed, so to speak. 
So we enter in and we start forming our protectionistic mechanisms. We come in as a wide open, fully heart baby. Oh, love, 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 just like heaven. Everything is hunky dory and beautiful. Yay, ah, love, love, love. And then we're screaming, ah, we're so happy. And then the first thing that happens is something smacks us right on the butt. Wow, that's a wake up call, right? And so, and it gets worse from there because through life, we witness people yelling at each other. We witness uh, that when we ask for something, they tell us um, verbiage that is not positive and loving. Uh, and so we start modeling our personality based on what we witness. Very few of us have exceptional parents that communicate with unconditional love. Almost all of us grew up in environments, not just parental environment, the entire world of environment around each and every one of us has conditional love as the baseline structure. Conditional love. If you do this, I'll give you that. That's a perfect example of conditional love. Um, and it is taught to us by our parents because our parents teach them. Uh, our belief systems teach us conditionalness. Everything, the school system, there is not one thing that isn't conditional. So we are not brought up in a place of unconditionalness, which means our hearts close, and it means we develop ego and personality. This, along with our karmic conditions, start creating a jadedness, a jadedness that disallows us from being uh, harmonious and loving. We're defensive. Oh, don't say that to me. Oh, they said something mean about me, you know. Uh, why do you think so many kids are mean nowadays? They're just heartless, right? They weren't given good teachings. They weren't given unconditional love teachings. Kids are just vicious on social media and things like that. They have no self-love, therefore they give no love. And this is a, 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 a significant problem for our children and obviously for us. So this is all created in society. And we form our personality through our teenage years and often into our 20s and 30s. By the time we hit 30, we've got a pretty good grip on how to defend ourselves. Uh, and a lot of times it's putting other people down, at the very least in our thoughts. Most of us are not very comfortable and confident with ourselves. We don't have a great deal of love for ourselves, And so we have this um, bubble that each of us live in. It's our bubble. It has a very unique um, tint, like our own very unique pair of sunglasses that we look through the world at. Paul Fletcher, I have my very unique uh, sunglasses. And I can tell you that whatever I'm thinking, it's probably not right. Whatever I'm doing, it's probably not perfect. And whatever I speak, it's probably not the highest wisdom. So in other words, no matter how good it might sound, there's always something better. No matter how bad it might sound or not accurate to you, that's probably because of my filters and your filters. They're not working the right way. So your filters and my filters are completely different. Guess what? We have seven billion filters. Every single one of us does not see the same, things the same way. We just don't. So this creates disharmony. Seven billion unique perspectives create disharmony. The only way, according to the higher wisdom and teachings, to rise above that is literally to break down your filters, literally to break down your ego walls, literally to recognize these examples of how our karma and our ego is formed over the course of our time and recognize that it the the wall around us the sunglasses around us the our little shade tree is what responds in a gossipy manner it is what responds in a jealous manner or a judgmental manner it is what responds in a defensive manner it is not our soul it is not our purest highest self it is a aspect of us that is crying to be transformed so that you can have a better future. Your specific place at this moment in time could be somewhere between 
zero and hero. It could be somewhere between I'm not happy even a little bit or I'm perfectly satisfied. If you're one of those that are perfectly satisfied, congratulations, you've come a long way, baby. Your karmic conditions are probably very good. You've probably been a very honest person, uh, done many, many good things, avoided saying unpleasant things, thinking unpleasant things. Basically, you've been a very, very good soul, not only in this life, but in many lifetimes. You and or the ancestors have been consistent in that pattern. Therefore, your life represents a trouble-free, happy, enjoyable experience. The majority of us don't land in that category. We land somewhere outside of that. And so accordingly, we, uh, we struggle. We have lacks of harmony in our finances, lack of harmony in our relationships, lack of harmony in our health. We have a lack of harmony in our thoughts, even in our words. Very often our words are not filled with love and respect and honoring to that person we're communicating with. Very often there's snippets of sarcasm in it. There's, um, there's uh, the way it's verbiage is to create the best result for us. Uh, there's a variety of ways in which we go through uh, maintaining this ego profile. So now that we've identified the source of what creates our disharmony, and we've looked at examples of how that shows up, now we want to know, well, how do we dissolve that, right? How can we dissolve that, and how can I create a better future? So now I have to give another piece of information in there about creation and manifesting. So I want to preface this by saying uh, that my teacher, uh, Master Shah, does not uh, teach on manifestation um, in the way I'll be sharing with. He doesn't really touch on that word at all, although he does talk about um, you know, having a, a, a bright soul future uh, and moving towards enlightenment. This information that I'll be sharing is information that I've learned along the way that may or may not have value to you. <clears throat> uh, from everything that I've learned, we are uh, co-creators on our path uh, and so my co-creation impacts you positively or negatively. Yours impacts me positively or negatively. And of course, my, co my creation impacts me the most since it's mine. Uh, our individual creations, just like I mentioned earlier, are for the most part unconscious. Think about it. How often do we automatically make a critical judgment of just about anything. The, the news we're watching, the, the person that just crossed the street, um, uh, whatever it was, it's just automatic where we're saying, thinking, or doing something that is not in a pure, unconditional, loving place. That's an example of being unconscious. And that unconsciousness is creating our future. Like it or not, it's just as true as when you're consciously creating your future. Because again, as mentioned, if you're watching this, you are one of the awakened beings on the planet. There's only about 10% 10, 10 of us that are actually awaking up, so it's not a big number. Uh, thank goodness it's getting bigger and bigger, but it's still small. And so as one of those souls that is awake, you know that what you think is what you become. You know that what you um, put your intention on could have a uh, much more positive benefit of occurring. That's not new information for you. but very few of us take responsibility for the 90% of unconsciousness that a lot of us tend to stay in. So in order to move from a place of disharmony to a place of manifesting what we want, we have to stop and recognize all of our places of unconsciousness. No one said it was going to be easy, guys. You can blame and point the finger at somebody else when what manifests in your life is shit. <laughs> but it doesn't change that you did it. It doesn't change that it's your responsibility. Okay? Then you can point the finger at somebody else or a group of people or the president or, 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 or that country, this country or, or that tribe or, or that. It doesn't matter who you point to. It's completely irrelevant. If it's, if it's a group structure, it's a collective karma. If it's, uh, if it's impacting you individually, it's your stuff. And so either way, you have to take responsibility for it. So now we start applying the deeper wisdoms. How do we unwind these and move into that place of consciousness? 
Well, you do it by moving into a personal, uh, personable and conscientious place of responsibility. And we do it by applying the higher wisdoms that Master Shah has blessed humanity with. And it's the reason why he has over 10 best selling books, uh, all built on the same subject matter soul over matter. Okay? Mind over matter is mind consciousness. But our mind gets us in more trouble than it helps us with. Those that have very strong willed minds, they can focus on manifesting wealth and whatever else they'd like. And people have reversed health issues with their mind. Okay? So it has been done, but it takes a very, very strong will. Mind over matter has given way to a higher awareness, a higher consciousness. And it is called soul over matter, and it is an aspect of the soul light era, which we entered into approximately 15 years ago. Uh, of course, humanity has been going through this massive shift over the last 100 years, and it'll be another 100 years before we complete uh, any of this major shift into love and light. Uh, it's not going to be a snap your finger and we're done and we're all hanging out with God and rainbows. Not going to happen that way, not based on what I'm hearing. It's a process in which we all have to purify, we all have to release the ego, we all have to move into love, unconditional love, we all have to move from selfishness to selflessness. We got to do the hard work, guys. It's not going to be the snap your finger stuff that uh, the la la birds are talking about out there. They're just in la la land. It leaves them in a place of a lack of irresponsibility. So we have to align to our soul. We have to align to our soul's uh, highest calling and intention. Our souls are part of original creator. Our souls are in their original form, unconditional love. We are of original creator, which means we are unconditional love at our highest uh, ability. And at any time, in every moment, we can call upon that existing knowledge. Our soul has just so much wisdom, far more than, than our little pea brain can handle. Uh, our soul represents, if you, as an example, the entire 99% usage of our brain. Our soul has that kind of intelligence. We're down here at five, six, seven, eight percent of our brain, and we think we got it all figured out. That's ego. And so when we connect to soul, when we start clearing blockages, at the level of soul that created the karmic conditions that created the parents, the peers, and all those things that formulated our personality, that formulated our ego blockages that create the disharmony in our life. When we go back to the originator of that at the level of soul, then all of the blockages that filtered into our life and brought us to where we are today can be surely but definitely reversed and we can move from a lack of harmony to a much much more meaningful joyful future manifestation okay so life comes at us 90 miles an hour we're plowing through life powering through life we're doing the best we can we're going to work we do we do this we do that we pick up the kids you know we, we go take care of grandma we're in our pattern dunk da dunk da dunk da dunk da dunk and we are comfortable in that place of pattern and then something comes out of the blue knocks us off our pattern okay this is a opportunity this is the perfect place to employ awakening and soul when that thing that knocks us off happens trust me it is not in any way shape or form accidental it is one hundred percent on purpose whatever that thing was something in the web of life and the interconnectedness of souls something in the manifestation whether it was a unconscious manifestation you might have brought to you or a conscious one something created that and that something has a great deal of immediate connection to you to be in a place of denial is futile you know what do they say on the board with star trek Denial is futile, uh, something like that. I'm going to change the words a little bit. So it's more than no coincidences. It is opportunity. 
it is a perfect moment to pop yourself out of an instant ego response and to float above it with a perfect uh, uh, overview of consciousness. My, one of my early teachers, the dweller on the threshold. What does the dweller on the threshold mean? It means you are the one above looking down on that condition. And when you do that, you step into a different response mechanism. And that impacts your future. Each and every moment, actually, we can change our future because each and every moment that comes to us, we have a choice of how to be with it. We have a choice of how to respond to it. We have a choice of what consciousness we bring to it. We have a choice of how much love we bring to that moment. And the good starting places are the incidences. How little, how big, irrelevant. That incident is always an opportunity to address it from the soul. Okay, so here's how the soul would address it. The soul and the soul wisdom would say, hmm, I see this incident and I take responsibility on a level I don't understand from my mind yet. I must recognize and I do recognize that there is a reason this came to me. I don't comprehend what that is, but I don't necessarily need to comprehend it now. What I need to do is to respond in the highest and best manner so that the amount of suffering I might go through shortly after this observation is absolutely minimized so that my future is also positively benefited. So the dweller on the threshold sees everything, doesn't become instantly involved from an unpleasant, reactive, unconscious, pre-built place that they've been building their whole life. And they do it as often as they can remain conscious to it, which might only be twice in a day when you could have done it 40 times. But that's twice, so congratulations to you for catching it twice. Maybe tomorrow you'll do it three times and so forth. So the soul will help you. Your soul has beyond comprehensible wisdom. All you have to do is ask for its help. Do you think you, you think you are the 99%? No, you are the 1%. Your soul is the 99%. Your soul is there. Ask it, dear my soul. As I move through life today and every day, Please interject, especially in those moments where they kind of catch me off guard and stop me. Help me to lift above the situation, move into a place of conscious awareness and responsibility, and do the necessary soul practices that I don't uh, address this unex unexpected thing that entered my life with um, the wrong attitude. You can ask your soul. That's a very simple thing to do. Your soul would be overjoyed to hear you're conscious enough to listen to it. Your soul is, would be dancing up and down. Oh my God. Finally, they're listening. So, <clears throat> you can do that. What is the next step? First step, catching it. Next step, taking responsibility that I will not respond unconsciously. Next step, whatever it is that has entered my life could be a little fender bender. It could be um, once again, the husband comes home late and it triggers donk, 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 which might be three years of triggering. It could be um, one of the kids is once again screaming about uh, how the brother's picking on them, okay? It doesn't matter what the trigger is. Trust me, you'll, have, you'll find 50 of them in a day if you pay attention. What well, matters? How you position yourself to respond with unconditional love. Okay, I catch it. Dear my soul, please help me to breathe down and see this event with unconditional love. 
Dear all of the souls involved in this, my children, this person that gave me the fender bender, my husband, whatever it is, they're all the souls involved. Please forgive me for this lifetime and all lifetimes that I have thought negative things, spoken negative things, or reacted in a very negative way, have done negative actions that would have brought this exact experience to me. Whatever I've done in the past, I don't even know what it might have been. Please forgive me. Now, the mind says, really? Forgiveness for something I don't remember doing about this event that comes? The mind jumps in there. Rah, 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 rah. That's ego. Understand the higher soul comprehension. <clears throat> the mind may question it. Just brush the mind away. Just say, it doesn't matter what you think. I understand that when I ask forgiveness, I am unwinding the possibility of this event and future events coming at me in the same way. I am dissolving the conditions that somehow brought this experience to me because I am moving to a place of unconditional love. I am in a place of responsibility, a soul level consciousness. I am recognizing somewhere along the line I've created this and I am asking forgiveness for whatever I might have done. As a natural side effect of this conscious step, your heart opens and your soul can give you the wisdom you need to respond with love. I will repeat. When you stop, catch it, see it from above, ask forgiveness, for whatever you may have done that has brought that condition to you, doesn't matter if it's the yelling kids that are triggering you or the ex-husband, it doesn't matter what it is. It opens your heart. If it's not opening your heart yet, keep doing it. And when your heart opens, your soul will give you the insights and the way to communicate more lovingly. If you cannot go upstairs to the yelling kids and communicate in a loving manner, if you still feel like ripping them apart physically, then don't go upstairs. If you cannot communicate with the husband when he comes home late for the 27th time, then don't communicate until you do more forgiveness. Open your heart first. Allow yourself to receive the higher soul wisdom on how to communicate from a loving place. <clears throat> it doesn't mean it's okay what any of them are doing. You are taking care of yourself and in taking care of yourself you are shifting old, very ancient, unsuccessful ego patterns that are not allowing you to stay in harmony. The minute you fall into that old pattern, you're in disharmony. Do you like that? How have you enjoyed it so far? Have you enjoyed the anger? Have you enjoyed the resentment? Have you enjoyed any of the crap that you've had to deal with? Really? So why would you do the same things over and over again and expect a different response? What's that the definition of? Insanity, right? So try it differently. Try it from the soul perspective. Apply this and don't go into that verbal communication to self or to others until your heart is open enough. You might have to sing love, peace, and harmony a few minutes. Great, do it. When you are in a good place, you go and you communicate with love. Now they may or may not communicate with love, but you will find, regardless of their response back to you, you will be in a far superior place to deal with it. Okay, You'll be in a far more heart-opened place, and you could respond again with more love. You might shock yourself, and then they will melt. They will melt because love melts all blockages. And because you brought a different person you brought your soul to the table and that response to whatever event not would have knocked you off you have now changed the trajectory of your future you have created a better future and all you have to do is repeat that's all you got to do is keep repeating and every time you repeat you uh, dissolve karma 
You dissolve old patterns. You dissolve things that haven't been serving you for who knows how many lifetimes. That's the reason they come to you. That's the reason anything unpleasant comes to you, is to be recognized and dissolved with love. It's a repeatable conscious process that requires you starting with one in the entire day, catching yourself in an auto response and moving into a place of consciousness, responding with love and then repeating. Give yourself credit. If you do that, okay, and you, and, and you somehow make it through that with love and, and, and you know, obviously it'll be better results than not, uh, give yourself credit after that. You know, find your own little private room or closet, pat yourself on the back, say, wow, I did good. That was awesome. Good job, ego. Good job, soul. Let's clear this stuff out, right? You need to literally talk yourself into it sometimes because life is vicious. Life can nail us hard. It doesn't care that you just got nailed two hours ago or last week. It doesn't care how suffering your health or your finances are because life was not created by those outside of us. Life was created by us. Kind of sucks, but that's the truth, okay? We created the soup we swim in, and this is the way out of that. We need to flavor the soup the way we want it so we can swim in it like it was a luxurious spa. I just made it up. You like that? So it's an example uh, of how better to bring ourselves to life. Okay? So I told you in the beginning that I would share with you what creates these problems, that I would share with you how to identify them, that I would share with you how to catch them in their tracks, and that I would give you the tools to stop them. The main tool is awareness and forgiveness and then don't move into a form of communication until you can do it with love if you can just repeat that it's virtually impossible for your life not to get better now even the next week if something happens double bad and you already did something good that you thought would address that same thing what do you do when that happens because it will happen probably one out of ten times. Something double bad will occur when you're doing everything right. You look at it, you smile, you rise above it, and you laugh. And you say, wow, there must be a deeper layer of this karma that I need to work on. You don't change a thing. Because if you buy into that, you lose. If you buy into it, you go backwards. Okay? Finally, the vast majority of us, me included, fail at this a lot. I fail at this probably, I'm probably about 70% of the time right now. But I'm doing good about 30% of the time. I've caught a lot of stuff, okay? And I'm always doing better. Uh, maybe next week I'll be at 31%. This is, uh, this is our soul. This is our life. This is not a race. If you are enjoying the suffering, okay, stay with your ego patterns. Do it the way you've been doing it. If you have a desire to stop and to get better and better and better, to feel better and better and better, to change your future, then this is the very simple pattern that you can implement in your life. And you got to give yourself love when you fail, like me, that other 70% of the time. Just this morning, I, I failed. I was busy doing something. I had a mindset. I got to get this done. This is important. I'm already behind. And then my alarm went off on my phone and I had to do a task and I didn't have a choice. It was something I had to call in on the phone and do that service. You know, my response was, oh, yeah, that was my response. And then I caught it. I'm like, oh, Paul, it's my time task. It's my, um, it's my, my ego's attachment to doing things in a timely manner that I have so much more purification in. So, I forgave myself. I made some emotional adjustment. I chanted love, peace, and harmony for a minute, cleared my heart, and then I, I did the task with love. Right? Um, this is how you have to do it. You have to catch yourself after you make the mistake and, and you respond negatively and you just, you catch yourself, you give yourself love, you give yourself forgiveness, 
uh, if you're still stuck in that, that unhappy place, right? You're just fuming and which happens for a lot of us a lot longer than really should. Use this intelligence. Do the exact same thing. Just forgive yourself. Talk to your soul. Ask it to come. Ask it to help. Ask it to release the blockages. Love, peace, and harmony. For those of you that don't know, it's the best. Love, peace, and harmony will bring you into a good emotional place very quickly. And then, you know, after three, four, five minutes, you're in a better place. Okay. Dear my soul, please help me to get it right next time. Right? It's just something that is very practical. Right? Now, being a monk on a mountain, sitting there meditating all the time, do they have to deal with kids, parents, spouses, coworkers that are buttholes? Do they have to deal with all of these things that we have to deal with? No. So do you think their soul journey is as hard as ours? No, it's not, guys. You are on the front lines. You are the Marines. You are out there battling. This is the same wisdom they have but you're on the front lines battling with it. So when you, when you defeat that ego in the real world of the front lines, your virtue, your soul growth is a hundredfold of what theirs might be. Do you understand that? That's why it's so hard. That's why your soul chose to came into this life during this battlefield. Because when you get this kind of wisdom and you apply it, you level up your soul so much more. You can have that happy, positive, enjoyable life that you know you deserve uh, but can't seem to grab. You can if you apply this wisdom in those moments. It has to be a lot more moment to moment because if we are not doing it as much as possible, then we are creating more bad stuff, right? Who wants to create more bad stuff and then have a future of more bad stuff? Doesn't make sense. You do the same things you've always done, all right? So I know it makes sense. It's not that you haven't heard it before in a different way, but hopefully I've been able to express it in a way where you're able to ingrain it in your life and apply it on a consistent basis okay the more you do the better your creation so there is a fast way to clear a lot of these ego blockages which is through a special service as a master teacher i've received extraordinary abilities that can clear a lifetime of blockages in a few minutes it doesn't matter if it's a physical pain or, or a depression or the ego aspects that inhibit us from um, catching ourselves okay uh, sometimes the pain body uh, meaning the emotional pain body is so stuck that we simply can't figure out how to respond properly and so uh, special services can help you with that um, these are things that are offered on an individual basis the honor fees for the in range from from 50 uh, up to many thousands and it depends on how severe the blockages are averages you know hundred dollars but it depends on how much suffering you're going through so connect with me personally if that's something of interest to you I'm happy to serve you um, I wish to invite you to return tomorrow where uh, I will check with heaven and we'll cover a new subject matter if you're new and you enjoyed this please subscribe come to my Facebook page like me and uh, up above this video is links to my website and you can learn more information that way as well. So let us offer our gratitude to all the beings of light, divine, down, source, my spiritual father, Master Shah, beloved Jesus, Mother Mary, Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, Kuan Yin, uh, all of our heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints. We love you all. We honor you all. We respect you. We thank you for your service today. We thank you for being here. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We invite all of these beautiful souls to respectfully return. And I will see you. Uh, I want to make one calling before you run off. I'm doing a special workshop this weekend. Please, please pay attention. You'll probably appreciate this one. This is uh, at, the result, at the center that I serve at as a master teacher. This is specifically on um, harmonizing your soul journey with your family members and your loved ones you know how you're on your soul journey and the and the loved ones are like rah, 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 what are you you're just one of those crazy people or they why do you think that way you know they butt up against your belief system 
and they don't get along with you anymore in the way that it used to because you're awakening and they're not. If you are one of those people or you know one of those people, highly recommend you attend this weekend's workshop. Okay, The links will be out uh, very soon. I'll go and find them and put them on the postings here. Okay, and um, But I'll mention it again. And it's only like $30, $23 for the webcasters. And it's like a four-hour teaching. Okay, So it's it will change your life I, I can tell you that it will give you tools where you can actually harmonize with that family member that's not happy with your spiritual growth because they just don't recognize who you are anymore so learn more about that um, and you can message me if you have any questions on that so love you love you love you thank you thank you thank you and we will see you next time bye bye everybody